The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Super Bowl 52 here on the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. Jason Bryant with you with some of our interview series from Media Week leading up to that big game on Sunday at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Super Bowl 52. Today, we will catch up with our interviews with James Ferentz, offensive lineman from the New England Patriots, Iowa State High School runner-up during his days on the mat at City High in Iowa City. You'll hear myself, you'll hear Andy Hamilton, and a couple other reporters from down on the floor on opening night. That was held at the Excel Center in St. Paul. What are your most vivid recollections about your time on the mat? What did, what did you get out of your time on the mat? Uh, you know, what's great about wrestling is, you know, when you're out there, you know, wrestling, it's just one-on-one. Uh, you know, everything falls on your shoulders, and I think that's something that uh, I really enjoyed, that kind of competitiveness, and it was always clear-cut. Either you got the job done or you didn't. How about the, the hand-to-hand stuff, the hand-to-hand combat, the balance, all that stuff? What, what uh, is most beneficial for an offensive lineman? I think it's you get really comfortable in uncomfortable positions. Uh, you know, like the, the scrambling aspect of wrestling is just one of those things you got to go out there and feel it and do it. You know, there's really no way to really uh, coach it or learn it other than actually doing it. And then offensive line play is very similar. You get in some weird positions, and if you're comfortable enough to know your body and where your weight is, and know how to use your hands not only for, you know, powerful, but balance. You know, you can use it on the opponent. You know, I think in offensive line play, it translates really well. How did you guys get into it? Because uh, your dad wasn't a wrestler, right? But, yeah. but Brian was. Uh, how, how did the Ferences begin this tradition in wrestling? Uh, well, we, we moved to Iowa. Um, you know, I went to elementary school with Matt Gatons, and I was on the basketball team with Matt, and... Like, I wasn't really good at basketball, and then all my other friends were wrestling, so I was like, all right, I'll go try this. I got beat up for, like, three years, and I was like, this isn't much fun either. <laughs> but, uh, no, I kind of stuck with wrestling, and just, I think, again, it was just that one-on-one competitive nature that uh, you don't get in any other sport, and uh, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. You got a chance to wrestle for, for Brad Smith, who's yeah. tied for the most state titles in Iowa history, yeah. maybe going to break that record this year. What what did, uh, what areas were unique about wrestling for him what what uh, made him such a special coach to wrestle for you know brad was uh, you know you mentioned my family didn't know much about wrestling growing up so you know i didn't know anything about you know the course of a season you know you go from junior high to high school you know your season's like infinitely times longer right so you know brad like really did a great job of guiding us through the course of the year getting us ready at the right times like you know, I remember coming out of the Christmas break a few times, just like, you know, why is, you know, Coach Smith working us so hard? Like, you know, what are we pushing for right now? But, you know, Brad knew when to take off and then when to push you. And, you know, I really relied on him. And uh, Jamie Camberling was another guy who worked with the upper weights at City High while I was there who, you know, two guys who really just helped guide you through, you know, the mental part of the season and how to kind of know when you're just putting your head down, grinding away, there's no light at the end of the tunnel. And then, they knew when to, you know, really light up or lighten up and get you ready for the big tournaments at the end of the year. Uh, state finalist, you wrestled Eric Thompson yeah. in the finals. He went on to win three NAIA national titles. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to remember how that match played out. Is this like a scramble situation, right? It got, got kind of wild at the beginning and kind of yeah. one of those go for broke type positions. Yeah, I wrestled Eric earlier in the year and, um, you know, talk about wrestling a guy who's just head and shoulders better than you. You know, I had no business being on the mat with him and, you know, going in, you know, we wrestled earlier in the year and he took me down at will. You know, I had some success, you know, in referee position, you know, and I was, so when we came into the finals, I was like, all right, so how do we attack this guy? And the plan was really just kind of try and grind it out as long as I could. But then in the first period, he kind of pushed into me in an over-under position, and I kind of had a chance to launch him, and uh, it ended up with me on my back. <laughs> and so, no, it was, uh, but it was, you know, again, it came down to competing against the best, which, you know, I didn't have any business being there with Thompson, but it was still a great experience. And, uh, you know, you really learn a lot, about, a lot about yourself competing with someone at the highest level like Eric was. How many uh, living room go-rounds did you and Brian have? Yeah, I, not that many. I mean, 
Brian, you know, still thinks he's probably the better wrestler. But, uh, you know, there might be some hidden footage somewhere at the City High Wrestling Room. I threw him around a little bit. Yeah. How much you pay attention to what's going on now with the Hawkeye wrestlers and, you know, City High wrestlers, that you're, yeah. you're pretty proud of the fact they won the conference. Yeah, it's fun following along, you know. Uh, that's something, too. You grow up in Iowa and you, you start to understand just, you know, what makes wrestling so special. And you go to the state tournament a couple times and just... It's such a cool event, and uh, it's you know it's such a great sport that you know you wish was more popular throughout America. But you know, so now after doing it, growing up, living it, it's really fun to follow them. And then uh, you know, obviously, you know, you follow your old high school like City High. You know, it's kind of cool to see those guys have a lot of success at the tournament, at the NBC tournament. And I know they haven't done that for a while. Um, but yeah, it's always fun. You know, you try and follow on Twitter, keep up with those guys. And then you know, when my wife and I are back in town, we love to sneak over to Carver for some of the big duels and. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's a great sport. Around your time, uh, you know, there's some guys with some credentials on the mat playing for the Hawkeyes. You know, yeah. I think, like, what, James Morris won a state title. I think was, was Humple around when you were yeah. on the team, uh, too? Humple, Kroll, uh, James Morris, and then, you know, my roommate, Riley Reef. Riley yeah. Reef's three-time state champion from Dakota. So, yeah, yeah, it's been around a lot of really good wrestlers, you know, who, you know, really better than me. I remember wrestling Morris when I was a freshman. I think he was, or I'm sorry, I was a senior. He was a freshman. They came down to get ready for districts, and I was like, all right, you know, I'll show this young guy what's up. And then I was like, oh, after that day, I was like, all right, this kid's kind of, he's pretty tough. I might not want to wrestle him again. When it comes to the skills, a lot of football players and, and wrestlers talk about how much wrestling makes your footwork better and makes you a better football player. Looking back, do you remember there was a moment where you're like, man, this wrestling is making me a better football player? Yeah, I, I always really, uh, think of it as your hand placement, you know, hand fighting, it's very different than in football, you know, your hand placement, right? But, again, using your opponent's weight as balance, you know, feeling them, where are they going, where's my body going, you know, how do I recover? And, yeah, footwork, like, you know, when you're circling, you know, you're leaning on a guy, he's leaning on you, you know, how do I keep leverage, how do I keep, you know, my position that I want, how can I use his weight against, you know, him? I mean, there's things like that I think are really relevant. But, you know, uh like you know it's everything's so different you know it's comparing apples to oranges but it's you know balance hand placement you know how can i you know manage their uh weight what it, and if it comes to the recruiting process well in your case you know you're right down the street but when like your dad's recruiting somebody or the defensive coordinator offensive coordinators are, are looking for for big guys on the line how much at iowa from your experience did they say okay this kid wrestle that's a plus yeah i mean I, i've never seen a guy where it wasn't a plus and then um especially guys like myself who maybe aren't the tallest or the biggest, you know, okay, how's this guy wrestle against bigger guys and, you know, how can they use their, you know, uh, leverage, you know, their advantages to, you know, or use their leverage to their advantage. So I think that plays a bigger role when they're comparing them. But, um, you know, like I said, I don't think they've ever looked at a multiple sport athlete and be like, wow, we don't want this guy, you know, so. When, when you're, when even back, going back to your days in college, when you were lining up against somebody, could you tell immediately if they'd wrestled or not based on how they, how they fought you on the line? Um. No, I usually try to like do a little scouting report because if I was going to play against a wrestler, you, you know, as you guys have been around the sport, the mentality of wrestlers is just a whole nother breed. And if you don't have your work hat on when you're going against someone who has wrestled, uh, you could be in for a long day. What are some similarities about you know linemen kind of often toiling in obscurity, whereas wrestlers, that's pretty much their mantra, man. I mean, what are the similarities that you've experienced from from life as an offensive line and life as a wrestler? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just. I correlate them as good things, <laughs> you know, guys who just, you know, I don't know, you just enjoy, you know, putting your head down, going to work, and, you know, understanding that you're not going to have an instant result, you know, it takes time, and, you know, I think that's the biggest similarity that we're willing to put in the time and effort. If there's a message you could send to every high school football coach in America that's maybe saying, ah, I don't need my kids to wrestle, I need them in the weight room, what message would you give them? You're wrong. That's, yeah, that's about it. It's just kind of, you don't really realize some of your dreams until they're right in front of you, like playing in the Super Bowl. Um, you know, in high school, it was all just about getting to the next level. Okay, how do I get from high school to college? And then how do you get from college to the NFL? And then once you're in the NFL, obviously, the, you know, the goal is to win the you know, whole thing. How close are you to what's, to what's going on at Iowa? And how long do you think your dad will be there? You know, I hope he's there for a while. Um, you know, um, I know my older brother, you know, his first year as an offensive coordinator. And I, you know, I think if my dad's still there, Brian has a good chance of being there too. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pulling for him to be there for a while. What do you think of Minnesota? I know this is kind of your territory. It's four hours from home. Kind yeah. of cool. 
I mean, we were just talking about it. I'd never really came up here other than to play uh, Minnesota in college. Uh, yeah, my wife's from just right up the road in Solon, so you know, I didn't really have much reason to travel up here. Um, you know, it's always good to be back in the Midwest, something I really enjoy, and uh, I know my wife does too. Yeah. Thank you. It's great. You know, there's, they were young guys when I was at Iowa, so it's kind of really cool to be out for a little bit and then see those guys mature and, you know, have so much success. Um, and, you know, you can't really have a better success story than Cole Cross and the guy who walked on at Iowa. I remember when he came in as, you know, that string bean, you know, we were all looking at him like, I don't know about this guy. And then after a few days in gear, I was like, okay, this kid can play. There's something there. And then coincidentally, you know, here we are five years later, and he's on the active roster. You know, he's, you know, has an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. Just kind of touch on his work ethic, too, because obviously you said the first couple of days it was like, all right, this kid this kids can do something. So yeah. kind of touch on his work ethic, too. Yeah, and I think that really, you know, something Reese Morgan has a really great knack of finding these guys, and he can squint and see it when the rest of us can't. So... Uh, you know, you know. At the same time, too, you know, we were college kids. You know, we don't know what we're looking at either. We just know, uh, you know, sometimes a guy jumps off film, and Cole definitely did that when he was younger. And you know, it's, it's just you know, all credit to him that he kept going away at it. You know, he worked with Chris in the weight room, did everything he needed to do away from the football field weight wise, and you know, the rest is history. Here he is. So as a Patriot, um, did you kind of give him advice, or does he kind of give you advice? Do you guys work off each other like that, or what's kind of like the dynamic? Yeah, I think that's uh, in every offensive line room. Guys always communicate, hey, what works for you? Hey, that works for you. Okay, I'll try it. Maybe it works for me. Maybe it doesn't. So, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. But, you know, the only way you find out is you talk with each other and, you know, see what works. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.